In this video, I want to go over some of my honorable mentions that I really highly enjoyed, but they just didn't quite make my best of list. The first book I really, really enjoyed, and I originally did have it in... The first book that I originally had in my best of list, but I was trying to get the list down and I took it out, that book is... Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I read Frankenstein for the first time in October and I enjoyed my reading experience so much. It has become probably my favorite classic of all time if you don't count The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson which is more of a modern classic. I really connected to it. I found it so easy to read and I do, I am a person who does struggle reading classics sometimes because I find the language so challenging to understand and for that reason it's almost like a barrier of entry for me to really feel immersed in the novel. But I didn't have that problem with Frankenstein. I found the prose very easy to understand and very beautiful. I also really, really loved the philosophical and moral questions that are explored in this book. I feel like the commentary in this is so interesting, so ahead of its time. It almost made my best of 2023, but I had to narrow my list down a little. So this one didn't quite make the cut, but it is one of my favorite reads of 2023 for sure. The next book that almost made my best of list is My Murder by Katie Williams. This is one that I had such an interesting reading experience with because I feel like a lot of times I'll have a higher opinion of a book right when I first read it. And then over time, I'll kind of sit with it and I'll feel like I don't like it as much as I thought I did. I'll feel like the book isn't as memorable. It doesn't stick with me throughout the year. This is a book that I had the opposite experience with. While sitting with this book, I really came to like it more and more. I felt like my regard for it went up over time. My favorite thing about this book was the commentary and exploration of our society's obsession with true crime. This book really stuck with me. I feel like it was very relevant and it's one that I really do want to reread. I bought myself a physical copy of this so I could reread it at one point because I did listen to this in audiobook format and I feel like I listened to it way too quickly and didn't really give myself time to properly absorb some of the commentary in this. I feel like this almost would have definitely made my best of the year list if I had given myself time to reread it before that point. The next honorable mention is Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. I have had such a fascination with Agatha Christie this year. I have read so many of her books. Starting over the summer, I really got invested in started reading through the Hercule Poirot series. I read a few of her standalones and I'm really enjoying making my way through her backlist. And this is definitely my favorite one I read. It is one of my more recent Agatha Christie reads. The biggest strength of Death on the Nile over all the other Agatha Christie books that I have read is that the characters in this book are so colorful. They're so vivid and they pop off the page. That is a sort of book that will stick with me. There's just something to me that is so different and special about Death on the Nile versus the other Agatha Christie books I've read. The ending was very shocking to me. I had such a fun time reading this book and just for enjoyment alone this book is definitely an honorable mention of 2023. The next honorable mention is For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. This is another one that I really debated putting on my best of the year list because I loved reading this book so much. Like I just said for Death in the Nile, this is a book that I got so much enjoyment out of. Like I just had so much pure fun reading this book. This is one of those very rare thrillers that I feel like is actually so different and really stands out from all of the rest. I love that I was never fully settled in the story or never got a chance to get comfortable because as soon as I thought I understood 
where the book was going. The author would throw a plot twist at you and it was just so interesting and engaging. This is also a book that I really love the use of multiple character perspectives. A lot of times I feel like rotating character POVs is something that will really detract from my enjoyment of a book. A lot of times we will have a viewpoint from a character that feels very unnecessary. It doesn't add anything to the story. And again, this is one of those rare books where I feel like the multiple character POVs was so well used, very intentional, and every character that Samantha Downing decided to rotate between added something important to the storyline. My next honorable mention of the year is Strega by Joanne Like Holm. This is a sort of book that I would not recommend widely. I think this is a book that not many people are going to enjoy. If you are one of those people who have read Death in Her Hands by Otessa Moshbeck and you did not like that book, you did not like the style of it, I do not think that you will like this book at all. Very meandering, nothing's really going on. The writing is very interesting and different, but the storyline itself is very slow. I just, I feel like a lot of people are gonna read this and they're gonna say at the end, I don't get it, what was the point? Those are the kind of books that stick with me and keep me thinking about it after the last page. So I really enjoyed this book because I found the writing so delicious, very witchy. That's what I'm looking for, as I feel like I've read so many books this year that don't stand out from one another. I want books that are very different that I haven't read before, and this is definitely one of those. My next honorable mention is The Truth by Nick Cutter. I was just so impressed with this book, primarily for the actual writing of the book. I was so in awe over and over again by just how descriptive Nick Cutter was able to get with very minute details. I feel like he did such a good job by evoking all the senses of the reader. He would very expertly describe the smell of something, the taste of something, the feel, what it looks like and you got such a clear picture. I did end up having to skim just a few parts of this book that were very detailed on page animal cruelty. I just had to fly past those pages, just turn them, you know? Like it's not adding anything to the story for me to read about this gorilla <laughs> who is infected with this virus tearing its body apart and eating itself in detail. If animal cruelty is a trigger of yours, please steer clear of this one. It's not worth it. It's not worth something that is going to hurt your mental health. My next honorable mention is Several People Are Typing by Calvin Kazook. I just had so much fun reading this book. There was so much commentary in this book on the modern workplace and the internet and our modern relationship to the internet. I feel like if you work in a corporate office, if you've ever worked in that sort of corporate environment, you will find this book incredibly relatable. I really love the symbolism in this book. I loved the symbolism on the cover. The author of this book did such a great job making allusions to the depression that we feel and the sadness that comes from the endless scrolling. Honestly, reading this book, I wanted to analyze everything. I found this book to be so entertaining, but also contained so much valuable commentary. And I feel like that is the sweet spot for me. I want a book to say something, but also be super entertaining and fun. And this was definitely that. My next honorable mention is a kind of surprising one because it's actually a romance. And if you've been watching my channel, you know, romance is one of my least favorite genres. It's not because I just inherently hate romance, but I often find the way that authors write about it. It's not done in a way that I can get along with because it's sometimes very cheesy, but this is an example of a romance that I really enjoyed. Okay, enough so that it is an honorable mention of one of my favorite reads of the year. And that is Kiss Her Once For Me by Alison Cochran. I can't think of a book in recent memory that made me literally like break down in tears streaming down my cheeks reading and this book did that to me. I think 
I felt so connected to these characters. The two main characters of this book really entranced me. I feel like the author did such a wonderful job building depth into them and I was so deeply rooting for them. I wanted them to be together. I did have a few small critiques for this book like it wasn't a full five star for me but it's one that I definitely have to place as an honorable mention just because of how much it impacted me while reading it. My next honorable mention is The Honeys by Ryan Lasala. I genuinely feel like this may be the most beautiful book that I own. Just the cover. The cover design is stunning. There's also really beautiful like chapter headings in this book and really smart details that kind of give you hints and clues. They get more warped the farther in you go reading this, which is such a nice touch because it really plays into what's going on in the story where the farther that the main character gets pulled into this world, the more off kilter things start to feel for them. I really liked and appreciated the fact that we are following a gender fluid main character in this book. And I thought it was so interesting to see toxic masculinity challenge through a gender fluid point of view. My favorite thing about The Honeys was the writing in this book. Ryan Lasala is a fantastic author. I definitely want to continue reading from him because this book convinced me that he has a gift and a skill for writing. I did not love his new 2023 release Beholder but just for this book alone, I will continue to read from this author. Something he did so well in this book was specific word choices. He would use descriptors that would connotate different sort of motifs that we see in this book. For instance, words that were descriptors for flowers or bees, he would use words such as sting or wither. It was just such an immersive reading experience. Also, I feel like the body horror in this book is so well done. If you are interested in reading body horror and you don't want to read The Troop, which I spoke about earlier because of the animal cruelty triggers in it, I feel like this is an excellent recommendation, recommendation for a body horror. There were some really well done horror elements in here that I have not seen done before which I really, really enjoyed and definitely was not expecting at all. My final honorable mention is What Kind of Mother by Clay McLeod Chapman. This is another one, you guys, that is super wild, off the wall, very bizarre. I found the characters in this book very easy to connect to and root for. I also really love like the sea swamp setting of this. I thought that was really like atmospheric. I do feel like this book takes some time to get into the first half is a little bit slow but the second half of this book really takes off and the last 50 pages of this book are like a total fever dream very very similar to ghost eaters actually in my opinion because the end of that book also felt like such a fever dream to me that's totally one of my buzzwords if you tell me that book reads like a fever dream. I know that I'm gonna love it and this is definitely one that did that for me. Those are my honorable mentions of 2023, the books that did not quite make my best of the year list but ones that I feel like really stuck out to me. What's really interesting is not all of these books were actually five stars so while not every book on this list is like absolutely perfect what these books have that set them apart is how different and original they are how much they stood out to me over the 200 books i read this year these books really really had something very special about them if you have not already seen it and you're interested in seeing the books that did make my best of the year. Definitely check out this video next. Several of the books that I talked about in this video were originally on my best stuff list. I had to narrow it down. I couldn't sit here and give you guys a 20 book long list. These are the best 15 that I read in 2023.